Plugin of the week is the Sound Toys Little Plate. Uh, this is uh, an emulation of an EMT 140. The EMT 140 goes all the way back to the mid 50s. 1957 was the first release, and the initial EMTs were mono, uh, mono in and mono out. It wasn't until a few years later that they released a stereo version. If you're not familiar with the EMT plates, it's basically a thin sheet of metal, about uh, four feet by eight feet long. And, uh, and suspended inside a metal frame and uh, tightened or tuned. And what it would have is essentially what amounts to uh, a speaker driver, a transducer that would be placed on it. So when you fed an audio signal in, it would essentially turn the plate into like a big speaker, but it would just uh, resonate or uh, vibrate uh, based off the input signal and then put a couple pickups on there uh, and you can pick up that and it comes back as reverberant energy. Um, now, there was also a, um, a uh, way of dampening the plate. So it was just like a very thin kind of piece of uh, rigid fiberglass that would go up. And the closer it would get to the plate, the more it would absorb the energy and decrease the time. So on a standard plate, like if you look at the plug-in here, if you started at a low setting, you would have on the short side about a half second reverb time uh, based on an RT60. So that means how long it would take for it to decay by uh, 60 decibels. Um, and then you go up to about five seconds, and you notice that's where it all of a sudden switches over to a red area there. And that would be about the maximum that you would get. Now, a lot of this would change based on the tuning. Um, all plates would end up sounding a little bit different from each other, actually some quite different from each other. So if you grab, you go to a studio and they have two or three EMTs, you really hear a distinctive difference between them. So they're not all the same, uh, especially a lot of the early ones, the electronics were modified on them. Uh, changed, uh, replaced, added tubes and stuff like that into it, which was not part of the original design. And uh, so uh, so there were some modifications on the very early ones, but uh, not long after that, they seemed to, especially with the stereo versions, seem to be more consistent and higher quality all the way around. What uh, Sound uh, Toys has done here is they've added or extended that um, range. So the red area here goes all the way up to infinity, meaning that you can actually have a plate sound that actually, you know, uh, extends infinitely, and that's something that would never happen in the original uh, electromechanical unit. You have a mix control here uh, for wet-dry, pretty straightforward, and then you have a low-cut uh, filter, so this would uh, cut the input signal feeding into the plate mechanism. So this is not an EQ on the reverb, it's an EQ on the input signal feeding the reverb, and it's just a low cut. Now, if you want to stylize it in any other kind of way, you can actually put an EQ afterwards, uh, whatever EQ, uh, use the CEQ, I guess, is probably uh, a good um, follow-up to this that's also nice and warm and going to give you a lot of character. Um, there's also a modulation switch. So it's pretty straightforward, and uh, it actually really sounds amazing. It's a very warm, rich sound. Now, what they did was they went, and rather than just sort of emulating one particular type of plate, and they don't really call it specifically an emulation, but they went and they gathered five of them and went through the different characteristics and uh, captured that real EMT plate characteristic in this plugin. So um, in terms of calling it an emulation, I want to you know leave that up to them for whether they call it. It doesn't seem like they specifically call it an emulation, but it's an EMT-140. And it fits perfectly into uh, the sound toys genre and what they have. So let's just set it up here. I have a, a classic example of where you would have it, which would just be a snare plate. That's like one of the most classic examples of where you would use something like this. The original unit had uh, a remote control because the actual hardware plate were sensitive to external noises. So it was often up in, in a sound isolated uh, closet or room that was as far away from the tracking room and the control room as possible. Um, and then all the cables run down and there would be a remote control which would actually send signals that would uh, change the reverb time. Uh, here you just get a knob and it works perfectly. So let's have a listen and just so you can get a sense of what this is all about.
So you have an actual infinite reverb here. One of the coolest things I like about this, and this makes it very interactive, with a, with a lot of emulations, what ends up happening is when you go about and you change the reverb time, uh, it will actually interrupt the process. Maybe it uses impulse responses or something like this. But the ability to adjust the reverb time uh, interactively, like, like, interactively like that allows you to use it in a more meaningful way. One of the things that you would have, you, you trigger an infinite reverb and then you would have to fade it out. Here you can actually just automate the decay time and then it would actually decay or close down more naturally sounding. And just playing around with that for a little while, you see that the value of that. This is really like tremendous sounding. Like this is everything that you want from a plate sound. I, and uh, I'm very particular about this. I've, I've gone through lots of emulations. I loved this like instantly as soon as I turned it on. And you could hear it just like the richness and the warmth of the plate. Again, not all plates. Some are brighter and, and some have more resonances in them, some more tonal characters in them. Um, this one is, is spot on in that way. Um, and so you could really hear it, how distinctively like amazing it sounds at shorter settings. If you wanted something tighter or if you wanted a classic rock sustain snare. And if you want a little pre-delay, then just call up uh, Echo Boy Jr. here, set it up for, you know, a few seconds here. So you can you can always throw in a pre-delay uh, plugin just to kind of uh, you know get yourself up that way. The one other thing that I want to show is uh, is the modification. When you go to longer settings, um, uh, what this does is it's like a not a modification modulation, which uh, kind of modulates the tail of the reverb. Um, the thing about plate reverbs is that they're very smooth sounding. Uh, the only other sort of electromechanical style reverb at that time when these came out in the 50s and, and going into the 60s were spring reverbs. Um, and so very similar idea, except the spring reverb had a very different character uh, to it, as you would expect from a spring. Uh, you know, like the, I always kind of describe it as like a boingy kind of quality, although that doesn't really make sense. I just think of slinkies and stuff like that. It has, it's a bit noisier. It's, it's more uh, rattling or kind of you know, uh, shifting around, they're noisier. Um, and so the reverb is less even. It has a different, very different character. Plate reverbs, uh, what makes them distinguishable is the smoothness of them. The fact that you get this sheet of metal and the way that it's activated and how you feed the signal into it and the way that it resonates and stuff like that. You get a very smooth kind of character that works really well for certain things. I happen to find that it works really well for things that have a lot of dynamic and you want it like a vocal and you want to bring in a little bit more of a smoothing character that can that can uh, um, this a plate usually serves the purpose for that so uh, very cool on this and let's move on to uh, a couple of other examples here I also have this on a vocal which would be the other classic example here so let me just uh, cue this up to a verse and uh, let's hear a little bit of this. Every time standing next to you, oh, I began to tremble and shake. So here on this one, I put a, um, an Echo Boy Jr. here. Every time standing next to you, oh, I began to tremble and shake. And uh, also here, what's kind of cool, you can add a little wide character here, uh, 10 milliseconds, and then it will actually kind of spread it out. But with the modification uh, or the modulation in here, it'll add a little bit of uh, um, movement to the tail. And that's not something that is typical in plate reverbs. Every time standing next to you, oh, I began to tremble and shake. And it's subtle, so here's the same thing without it. Every time standing next to you, oh, I began to tremble and shake. So you could hear all that's just a bit smoother. It's a subtle thing. Uh, it wasn't was not an uncommon thing 
um, and in a lot of mixing in the analog realm where you would take the outputs of certain things or feed a send uh, from the reverb return and send it into like a chorus effect or put a chorus effect or something like that on the end of the reverb. And a lot of that would have a similar type of effect, although that doesn't sound uh, exactly what they're doing there. Uh, there's just a bit of movement um, between the sides and that just kind of helps to give it a little bit more character. Um, the thing I like about this um, is even with longer reverb times, it never seems to sound clogged up. Like there's a real warmth focused character. Sometimes when plates have a lot of, you know, like are very bright, they can kind of work for certain sounds, but then they, the energy kind of gets spread and very lost in the mix. And the one thing I love about this is in the context of the mix here, this never seems to really get lost. So let's just hear it a little bit more in the context uh, with the guitars, and which is over here on this stem. Here we go. Every time sitting next to you all, I begin to tremble and shake. Every time sitting next to you all, I begin to tremble and shake. If I can't have you, baby, my heart will surely So you could hear how that just, you know, kind of sits right nicely in the mix uh, without being up too loud. There's also, uh, you know, a very cool thing here uh, that I wanted to show also where you can uh, sort of stack up a whole bunch of stuff just to create completely different sounds that you can then record and sample outward and stuff. Every time I stand next to you all, I begin to tremble and shake. Where you can get the the, accumul the cumulative energy of a lot of things, and when you want to pull out, almost sounds like so much more of a natural fade out than just actually using a fader. Uh, so that to me is just amazing. Uh, I I don't know. I spent probably a little bit too much time <laughs> playing around with that idea and in the right um song and in the right place that you know can be a really really cool effect to end the song over a break whatever uh, a very very cool option uh let's see there's also one other example here that i put in which is on uh some guitars <laughs> little low cut in there to take away some of the some of the rumble again with a with a uh, pre-delay here just to create a little depth A good combination would be to open this up in in uh, the effects rack and then just kind of put the two uh, right next to each other uh, and put that prior and then that would uh, be an excellent combination. But again, you can hear the depth. Uh, it never seems to sound clogging even with longer reverb times. That's something that I always remember um, about plates in studio and mixing you know, on analog consoles and analog records and um or analog recordings working on analog console and mixing with plates and it's something that i don't quite find so much with analog emulations of the emt um, but with this it just seems to work like instantly it just has that solid plate vibe that just kind of sits right in the mix uh, perfectly so a uh, great job it's you know it's hard to talk much more about it this there's, there's so many uh, ways that you can use it it's just really audio examples there's not a ton of features it just does what it does incredibly well so uh, nice welcome addition to the sound toys uh, collection a uh, little plate um, a EMT emulation the EMT 140 and uh, that is the uh, plugin of the week